Greetings guys, we are back. And in the previous video, we were working inside of our light blueprint and we set it up so that when the player approaches our light, quick refresher here, uh, approaches our light, our help text is appearing and it tells us to press F to toggle. So we can press F and turn on our light. We can press it again and turn it off. Uh, if we turn it on and we exit our trigger volume, our help text goes away and we can no longer press F to turn on or off our light because we are not close enough to it, but we can turn it off as we get close to it again. And because we're using class blueprints, uh, we were able to create a second instance of our little light uh, setup here. And this one just works automatically. Everything that we've done uh, carries over to this instance as well. So we can turn this one on, or we can turn this one on or off, and they work individual individually. So uh, that's what we did in the previous video, but we're gonna take it a little bit further, one step at a time, continuing our baby step journey into blueprints uh, in this video with the construction script. And the construction script is going to allow us to add variants uh, to each individual instance of our blueprint. And what do I mean by that? So say we have our two lights here. Suppose we wanted this light to be green and we wanted this light to be red, or uh, suppose we didn't, didn't want the text to appear uh, when we enter the trigger volume, etc. cetera. Uh, how would we go about doing that? Because anytime we make a change to our blueprint so far, it has been carried over to this instance of the blueprint of the other, the other instance of this blueprint as well. So how would we go about doing that? Well, uh, we're going to do that inside the construction script. So uh, let's go ahead and open up our light blueprint. So I'm going to double click and open it up. It's going to take us to the event graph, which is where we provided all the script uh, for the uh, behavior of our light thus far. Uh, but we're going to leave the event graph and we're going to hop over to the construction script. So go ahead and click this tab in the center here and we get an entirely new graph with just one singular node on it. Uh, and this is the construction script. So everything that we've been doing so far on the event graph, all that script kind of pertains to what happens in game. So when you're in game, the event graph is updating and, and checking things and making sure that your script is functioning as you set it up. Uh, the construction script, as the name kind of suggests, is being used when you are constructing this blueprint, when you are working with this blueprint, when you are level designing and, and building out your levels, uh, the construction script is used uh, to update the properties of your blueprint. So anytime you make any changes to this blueprint, if you move it inside the level, if you change some of the properties of the light, for example, this construction script is going to fire to make sure that it has the most updated information about this blueprint. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our spotlight and kind of what we've been doing on the event graph here by getting a reference to our spotlight. Uh, we're going to do that on the construction script. And a, a little bit of a warning, this is a, a little bit more of an advanced, well, not, I shouldn't say advanced, intermediate uh, blueprint application here. But we've kind of worked our way up to this point, so I feel comfortable that you guys should, should be able to follow along and should have a lot of fun and, and make our light a little bit more customizable. So we're going to continue. We're going to march forward. Let's take our spotlight in our components here. We're going to left click and drag that into our graph. Just left click and drag it into our graph. That's going to give us a getter. So now that we have our spotlight, we know that we want to be able to change the color uh, of our spotlight. So how can we do that? Well, if we drag off of our pin here and we release, uh, we can search for color. And that's what we want to change. So let's search for color. And when we search for color, you see we have the option to get light color so we can get the current color that's being used, or we can set the light color. So let's go ahead and choose set light color going to give us a new node connected uh, to our spotlight. And below our target here, we have the option of adding a new light color. So whatever we define as this uh, new light color will be the color that is used for our spotlight. You can see there's a little box here to the right of that. We could actually click right here and define what that color will be right here inside of the color picker. But we're going to do something a little bit more intermediate just so that we have some more flexibility with how our little light blueprint uh, works here. What we're going to do is on this pin here, we're going to right click on it. Let's go ahead and right click on it. It's going to give us a little context menu. Uh, there's two options here. We're not going to worry about this bottom one here. Uh, we're going to worry about this one right here at the top. It says promote to variable. So go ahead and choose this option. And when we do, it's going to give us a brand new node that is automatically connected to it. And this node will hold the value of our new light color. So I'm going to move it down here just a little bit under our spotlight like so, just so it's a little bit cleaner. And with this node selected, 
I'm going to go over to the details panel in the upper right up here. And we're going to rename this first of all, because new var isn't very helpful to us. We're just going to call this light color, like so. And uh, if you look down in the default value section, we currently can't set what this value is. We need to compile before we do that. So it says, please compile this blueprint. So let's go ahead and do that since it's trying to tell us to do so. So I'm going to go to the toolbar, click compile, and it's going to say uh, that we are ready. We are good to go, as the tooltip uh, suggests. That might be must be that must be the most helpful tooltip ever. We are good to go. Uh, let's go over to the default value now. We can now set what our default value is going to be. So I'm going to click this uh, bar here, and we can choose a color. Uh, in fact, you know what we could do? Let's actually close this. Let's go to our spotlight in the components uh, window over here, and let's go to our light color that we had previously set. So in the details panel here, let's go ahead and click this. We're going to take our old color here that we had previously assigned or new because we're not going to change it here. We can left click. Let's drag that up to our color bar here, like so, just so that we have uh, a reference to what that color was. We don't need to hit OK or Cancel here. We can just close this now. Now we're going to select our light color uh, node here and assign that value as our default value. So let's click our color picker here. There's our color. Let's go ahead and select that. And that's going to be our default value again. So let's go ahead and hit OK, like so. And the last thing that we need to do is take our construction script here and connect it to set light color, like so. And let's move that down just a little bit so it is nice and clean. So now we've used the construction script uh, to set our light color. But there's one more thing we need to do before we are done and ready to test this. Back in the details panel for our light color here, uh, let's go back to the details panel. There's an option called editable. And if you mouse over it, it says whether this variable is publicly editable on instances of this blueprint. This is what we want. We want to check this. So go ahead and check this. And when we do so, over on the far right, over in our My Blueprint panel, here is our light color variable. I guess I should have pointed this out earlier. They got added when we created this. Anytime we create a variable, uh, it'll get added here. In fact, we could have created this light color right here from the uh, variable section by clicking Add, and then over in the Details panel, changing it to a linear color like we did, linear color uh, like so. And then we could have dragged this in and then plugged it in. But it was much easier to just right click on this and say promote to variable. So that's why we did it that way. Uh, but I guess I should have mentioned that it did get added to the My Blueprint panel when we created that variable. But back to our light color here. On the far right, we have this eye icon. And this eye icon lets us know that this variable is now publicly editable. And we'll show you what this means in a moment. Uh, but if we mouse over the eye icon, it says variable is public but missing tooltip. We can actually add a tooltip to this as well. So if we go back to our details panel, under editable, there's an option for tooltip. It says extra information about this variable uh, shown when it is when the cursor is over it. So let's add a tooltip. And this is going to be uh, to change the color of the light. So change color of the light. And we hit Enter. And when we do so, our uh, little eye icon over here is now happy. It's green. So let's go ahead and compile and save. And when we compiled, notice again our construction script fired and updated. Let's save this and let's go back to our level here. So I'm going to go back to our level. And when we play, or actually before we play, uh, let's make some changes to our light. So uh, with our light selected in the level now, if you look in the details panel, we have a new property that we can adjust. So here's our default light color for this particular light we can change this light color. We could say, let's make this one red, like so. So we hit OK. Now when we select this instance over here, it has its default value, but we can change this one to a different color. So we can click the color picker here. We'll make this one green, like so. And if we play now, when we go over to our light and we press F, this one comes on as red. When we go to this one and we press F, this one comes on as green. So now we have some flexibility with how our Blueprint class is functioning inside of our level. So uh, that is all fine and dandy. We've 
pretty much accomplish what we've set after to do, but there's one more thing that I kind of wanted to show you really quickly before we wrap this video up. Uh, let's hop back to our level blueprint, or excuse me, not level blueprint, but our light blueprint. <clears throat> I'm going to undock this for just a second here. <clears throat> excuse me. So if we select our light in the level and we wanted to change the light color, uh, it's really not very helpful for us as level designers to kind of change and tune and tweak to get the light value that we want because we're not seeing it reflected in real time. We have to actually play and run over to our light and turn it on and see uh, to see the effects of our change. So we're going to make one more change to this uh, to make it easier for us as level designers to tune and tweak our lights uh, inside of our level here. So what we're going to do, back on our construction script here, let me move this over just a little bit. <clears throat> we're going to take our spotlight here and we're going to drag off of it. And before we have been using the toggle visibility to toggle our light on and off, for debug purposes and for us to adjust this as level designers, I'm going to hold uh, home and delete all that. Uh, let's go for set visibility. So we want to be able to set the visibility here. So we're going to choose set visibility. And that's going to give us a new node. And there's a couple pins on here, propagate to children, et cetera. We're not going to worry about pro propagate to children. But the new visibility is whether or not this light should be on or off. And that's that same property uh, inside of our details panel here. If I scroll down under the rend rendering section, that's that property right here that we are going to be defining. So how can we use this to help us in our level creation process? Uh, let's go ahead and drag our set visibility up and connect it to our light color, like so. So let me make sure, let me maximize this so that you can see what we're doing here. Uh, so make sure that our light color is connected to our set visibility. And just as we did before with our light color, where we right clicked and created a property, we're going to do the same thing for our new visibility. So let's right click again on the new visibility pin and promote that to a variable. And our node got kind of hidden up there, so I'm just going to move it down just a little bit. And we're going to rename this again, just as we did before inside the details panel. We're going to call this, uh, we'll just call it the visibility setting. So visibility setting. And we're going to make this publicly editable so that we can define whether our light is on or off inside of the uh, level editor. So I'm going to check this box here. And let's add a tooltip just for the sake of being a good designer here. So we're going to say, turn on or off the light. <clears throat> so with all of that, let's compile and save. And then let's close this blueprint. And if we go back to our uh, light in the level here, inside the details panel, we have another new property that we could play with. And if we mouse over, I guess I should have showed this earlier too. We mouse over, it says turn on or off the light. It says change the color of the light. So by default, we could turn this light on inside of our level. And that will allow us to now manipulate the color right here inside the level. Uh, and we can kind of see what the light is going to be. We can hit OK and change the color. Uh, we can go over to this one here and select it and turn this one on and say that this one is now bluish color like so. And because we're leaving, let's leave this one back here checked. So we're going to leave visibility set to on. So this light will be on by default now. And whenever we enter this trigger, we will press F and turn it off. And then when we're in the trigger, we can press on or press F to turn it on and off. But by default, it will now be on. For this one, we're going to uncheck the visibility setting and it's going to be off by default. So it's going to be just like it was before. But this one is now on by default. So let's go ahead and play now and see what happens. <clears throat> if we run over, our light is off. But our light on the back side there is currently on and it has a lovely shade of blue. So we can go to this one. We can press F to turn this one on, and it's green. We can go to this one and press F to turn it off. So there we go. We've added the ability to kind of uh, implement some tools for us as level designers to kind of modify our blueprints directly inside of uh, the details panel right here inside of the, the level editor. Rather than opening up our blueprint class and making changes inside of our blueprint, uh, we've exposed variables for us to modify it directly inside of the level editor here. So it's just made our life a little bit easier. 
So uh, with that, we are actually going to pause here. This is going to do it for this video. Uh, we've been working inside the construction script uh, inside of our class blueprint here. And we've made our lives so much easier uh, for modifying our blueprints inside of the construction script. Uh, that's going to do it for this uh, video. We will see you uh, in the next video where we begin talking about the different uh, workflows for creating class blueprints. So far, we have been uh, creating a blueprint inside the content browser and then inside of the blueprint editor, adding components and making modifications uh, inside of our class blueprint. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, the different workflow where we can work inside of the level editor and add the components that we need inside of the, the level editor and then turn that into a blueprint as well. Just a different workflow that we're going to use uh, to wrap up this series. So uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next video.